Hey guys, in this episode of VTech Academy with our K-Swap Fit, we preempt clutch problems with modifications to our clutch master, and I decide to redesign the rear mount so that it doesn't interfere with the ground. Welcome to VTech Academy, you're about to get schooled. We have our fit back in and uh, a couple things we found out uh, with some internet sleuthing and actually with some advice from Jason Davidson, he said a lot of people don't like the fact that this clutch has a damper on it. The damper actually releases the clutch slowly. So we looked, took it apart, looked at the way it was functioning, and we made some modifications. Uh, I think they're going to help us out, get much quicker clutch action. Uh, the engine we're putting in with the ECU we're putting in does have rev hang, but we hope to tune that out. So hoping now our clutch speed matches our idle drop and everything drives a little bit smoother. Another thing is I found out over the years that when people put a K24 engine in the car, it actually changes the way the rear mount works and it winds up being really low and actually hanging down enough that it can catch on speed bumps, uh, getter bumps if you're tracking the car, things like that. And uh, that's not good. The lowest part of the engine uh, should be the oil pan typically uh, or exhaust on B-series. Uh, so I made some modifications to the rear bracket in order for that not to ha be a problem anymore. Uh, anyway, we'll be getting the motor in here today as well, but uh, let's look at some of the changes I made. Okay guys, we have the original uh, ZFK rear bracket which works in the GEK. Uh, this particular bracket was dual height because K20, K24, we have dual height stuff. but we had a problem with a few people that are road racing the cars. Uh, when you have the engine at the lower position, because it's K24, it kind of drops the back of the engine down, and you wind up using this bolt hole, and this actually winds up hanging down below the engine a little bit, or actually below the subframe. So it's a little bit in danger's way. So what I decided to do was I decided to make two different versions. On this lower one, you're on a K20, that actually raises the motor up. So there's just a single hole for the K20. Uh, I've turned this piece that goes underneath the transmission, this extra piece of brace, into more of a skid plate type thing so that if you do happen to go over speed bump or something like that, it's gonna help deflect away from the engine mount so it's not gonna put as much force on the bracket, maybe try to break it off the transmission. Uh, and then of course we have the one for the K24. So when you're mounting the engine lower, you get this shorter version of the bracket. Uh, the reason that necessary, by the way, is because we use the stock rear mount uh, on the fit, and that mount comes out of the subframe and points downward slightly. On the fit engine, uh, there's this huge aluminum bracket that uh, acts as a deflector if you hit it with a speed bump, uh, but on the K20, that's not there, so uh, I've decided to go ahead and make brackets specific to the engine you have, so that you're much less likely to make contact with the ground. And this works much, much better. So, uh, by the way, if you're ordering a kit for either your CRZ or your FIT, uh, make sure you tell them whether or not you're using a K20 or a K24. By the way, most people will be using this bracket because K24 really is a motor that goes in this car because of the electronics. More on that when we actually put our ECU in. So that's what I did with the engine mounts. Uh, let's check out uh, what we did to the Clutch Master. We, uh, Converted our car over to manual, which means adding a clutch master. And I was kind of baffled by the way the dampener works. So I decided to take it apart to kind of explore it a little bit and figure out what we can do to, to get rid of it. Let me show you how it works. There's a seal. This is where the fluid winds up sitting. And it passes out of the clutch master and back into this. And this is how it gets out. So there's a seal here. Then there is a plate that goes on, and then there's a ring of metal that kind of holds it down, and then you tighten up this, this plate on the outside, and it kind of mashes it all together, and it pushes the plate down against this metal piece right here. So what I believe is happening is when you initially push on your clutch, this plate flexes and allows the fluid to flow quickly out the hole, back in the hole, into your uh, clutch slave cylinder. But once you let go of your clutch, this plate relaxes and kind of flattens out, and its closeness to these two holes 
kind of slows the flow of fluid down and then allows the clutch to kind of disengage slowly to match the rev hang that Honda does. And that uh, makes the clutch more durable by not just immediately dropping it and slamming it onto the, um, onto the surface of the flywheel. Uh, we, of course, are going to tune our rev hang out, so we don't want a clutch that reacts slow. So one thing you could probably do is you could probably just drill a hole in the center of this and put it right back in there, and that would allow the fluid to flow easily from one hole to the other without being restricted by this plate. We'd have to put a fairly large hole in there. Uh, and it should seal fine because there's a rubber seal around this particular plate. I don't think you'd want to leave it out because if it was out totally, you would just be relying on this rubber seal. And I think a lot of air would get in here above this hole, and that would be a problem. A lot of people on the internet were saying that the way to fix this is to weld these two holes shut and then drill a hole straight down here to connect the uh, piston directly with the output for the slave. We actually did that. So you can't really, you can see the screwdriver goes through. You can see how it, we drilled all the way through it. But I don't think we're gonna bother sealing that up. I think if we just assemble it with its seals, it'll be fine. And because this hole's at the top, air should bleed out. So, so we shouldn't have a problem with, uh, with air, uh, with an air pocket in it. So we're just gonna go ahead and Reassemble it just the way it was, and that should actually allow us to get quick action on our clutch, which is what we need uh, in order for uh, it to work, you know, a little bit more like a normal K-Series car and not uh, have that delay. That's going to work a lot better for quick shifting, like for at the track. That's how we're going to handle that. We actually bought an aftermarket master. But we looked at the factory one too, and they're identical in the way they operate. Uh, the only difference is the factory one looks a little bit cleaner than the aftermarket one does. Uh, but that should uh, do the trick for us, and uh, we'll report back on, uh, on how it works out and let you know if we have success or failure. I'm not modifying it. I'm repairing it. When I cut it out of the car, I accidentally cut the wrong side of this plug. I needed the plug to make my adapter harness. I was in a hurry. got our K24Z uh, ready to go in the car. Uh, we, just to kind of review what all we have, we have a K24Z out of a TSX. We have an Accord harness. We chose that because we're gonna use the Accord ECU. I felt like that was gonna work a little bit better. And K-Tuner has a tuning option for that. So we'll be able to tune it. Uh, the transmission is also an Accord transmission, manual transmission, so it's a five speed, um, manual transmission. The other thing we did is we took off the power steering pump and we made this uh, pulley for it. If you're using a different water pump housing and different alternator, you can use the pulley off of uh, like an EP3, but uh, 
I made up a handful of these. Basically, they use the EP3 uh, pulley itself and bearing and bolt, uh, but it's just a, a different bracket. We probably should make them out of billet, but they're metal. That's because this isn't available for this engine. Right, it's not available. Because they for only it. had power steering. Pumps. Right, because they were either in CRVs with power steering or they. You know, it's funny. There may have been a European version of it that, that had, had EPS, had EPS, or something. Yeah. But um, as far as we could tell, there wasn't any American part number available for that, uh, for for uh, an idler. Everything else had the wrong offset here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you can tell whether or not you can use a factory part by the alternator bolts. If the alternator bolts come in like this, it's going to require this type of uh, pulley. If the alternator bolts come in forward like that, you know, like on the 2012 SI. Uh, then it's gonna, it can use a stock, uh, stock pulley. We built a pulley for it and uh, we are ready to install it. Uh, did we do an intermediate shaft? No. We, I'll dig up an intermediate shaft. We, we have it. The car. It. We had to take it off for Roy to test fit that bracket. Oh, okay. So we got it sitting over there. All right. Yeah. Good enough. All right. So, uh, oh, and we need it off to put our bracket on. Got it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. All right. And then one more thing. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't have an AC uh, compressor. I would like to run AC on this. Uh, <laughs> so that means we had to run a custom belt. The belt, uh, I'll get to part number four uh, in just a second here. We had to run a custom belt because we're not running AC. Uh, there is no, as far as I can tell, seven... Uh, seven rib wide one, although there might be if we do a little bit more research. I just went over to Riley's and found one that was the correct length. It's a Gates Micro V uh, 53, uh, 535, uh, which means it's approximately 53 and, and 5 eighths inches long. Uh, or, or as this says, 54 and a quarter. I don't know. I think that might be what it stretches out to before it gets bad. I'm not really sure, but uh, this number is usually the inches plus eighths, but it shows down here 54 and a quarter inches long or 1,379 millimeters long. Uh, so that's the length belt that we have on here. When we eventually put AC in it, uh, we'll put a different belt on and we'll figure out whatever that needs to be. Now, let me show you why we're not using AC. If you look here, the core support, it comes down straight and then kind of kicks backwards and this lump right here is in the way of our pulley. It's not going to allow us to mount AC in without cutting that out. It's the same way on the C or Z. So at some point we're going to have to go in there and, and, and chop that out and, and reinforce it because that's actually what holds up the uh, core support or the radio support. So we're going to probably come in from behind and attach something and then just chop that area out. Uh, that'll be like, yeah, that'll be for a future episode. Uh, I'd like to actually make some sort of a piece that we can pre-bend and then sell so other people can do that. Mm -hmm. um, that, that would be ideal. Uh, but um, again, we're gonna have to cut that out. So uh, the subframe's out, so we have plenty of room to get to drop this thing down. We should be able to just get it right in there and bolt it in. As we go down, we're gonna bolt our new mount brackets in, then, uh, bolt the engine in and, and uh, then put the subframe in. So uh, have you already done this kit? Have I ever done one of these in a car? Four videos and things. I've never done this as a video. The, the closest thing I've done to this is the um, a CRZ. Okay. So if you have going to talk about that because. Oh, yeah. So let's come on over here and you have to it, we need the CRV style, but it the CRV block bracket won't bolt on there. Right, the CRV block bracket won't bolt on here because this bottom bolt hole is different. So uh, it's different. And you can't use the 2012 SI bracket even though it bolts on because these holes are in a different location. Yeah. So. And the factory you, TSX bracket that comes on here is, well, that is that the it's post mount? It's got that dual yeah, step so kind of weird thing. Yeah. So, totally wrong. So it has to be changed. That needs to be changed. In fact, we should probably just sell the kit with that in it. Yeah. Um, make that yeah make that part of the price kit include yeah that. exactly uh there are a couple different versions of the kit available and of course the rear of the engine is what always determines what uh mount kit you're going to use with this particular one it's got kind of an oddball bracket that bolts to the transmission and to the block 
uh, these two to the block, this to the transmission. Uh, it hangs down a little bit. Uh, there's actually a short and tall version of this. This being a K24, it's a shorter version. Um, we used to make it with both bolt holes in it, but the problem we were having was people would mount it at the higher position and then there would be extra bracket hanging down and they might clip it on something, like people racing these cars. The K24Z engine, the reason we're using this is because this, the ECUs that work with this engine are compatible with the, this wiring harness. If you wanted to use a K20, like you would on a CRZ, you actually have to do a, quite a bit of wiring. The plug that is up there that, uh, I think it's called the A plug, that plugs into the ECU, is, has uh, too, many, uh, too many openings. So you would need to cut that off and repin it for the older style one that came in the 06 Civic Si if you uh, wanted to use a K20 with this swap. And it can be done, as a matter of fact, I can give you instructions on how to rewire it, uh, repin it. I did it for Honda for a uh, CRZ. They were rally racing and it had to have a two liter. Uh, and, as far, and they say it worked. So uh, I would m probably look at it to make sure that there were no you know, huge changes I had to do for the, for the fit, but I would imagine it's you know, good for that as well. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass this off to Brian and Scott and let them do this. I'm actually prepping to go to California, making a trip out to Donut Media. More on that another day. Or watch Donut Media and perhaps you'll see my handiwork there. I'm gonna get busy on that stuff and like I said, pass off uh, the torch to these guys because okay. they can do it. <laughs> bracket sticks down low because that's actually how the factory had it with an L15 because that mount comes out of the subframe at that angle and that's basic that's how the engine is set in there is all based off of the rear bracket. decided to try to run the cables for the shifter over here and to go up inside there and around through there but I feel that that's slightly in the way for the exhaust because here's our flange right here in front of my camera we got to go all the way into that inside there Boy.
Right hand axle for the fit. That is the left hand or driver's side axle for the fit. Testing the barb we just made and uh, hmm. We made it too good. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Fish. Using stock heater lines, made them reach, made a little adapter. We utilized the stock fuel line, purge the line. purge line, booster the, line, the booster line. We used some TL shift cables, made an adapter for the shifter using the fit box. We're kind of at the home stretch here. Uh, we've got uh, a couple things left to do to get it ready. Uh, right now, uh, Brian is working on an adapter to go from this plug on the fit to this plug on our 2008 Accord harness to make it a little adapter harness for that. Then that should allow us to mount the ECU and have connection to the engine. Uh, one of the other things we're doing is the hoses. Uh, I did my normal trick where I uh, take a piece of welding wire and uh, figure out what size and shape the hose needs to be and then run down to O'Reilly's and find something that's got that general shape, make some adjustments to it, remove the unwanted parts, and that gives me the proper shaped hose. Right now I'm working on the bottom hose. That one was kind of interesting. But I found this hose that looks like it's gonna match pretty well. Let's start off cutting it a bit on the long side because uh, I can always cut more off. It's very difficult to cut less off. So we'll try this on the car and, and see if it fits. And then move on to the next thing, intake manifold. So this uses a MAF sensor, M-A-F, mass airflow. So we need a properly sized tube with the MAF sensor uh, mount in it so that we can mount our MAF sensor and have it uh, work properly. So that comes out of our harness somewhere. We are probably gonna have to make some adjustments to like an Accord one because the Accord one, it comes off the side of the airbox over here. This one is gonna be more like that. So we're gonna have to make some adjustments to the tube in order to get to work. I got just a generic one because I knew I was gonna cut it up. Hopefully it's sized properly so it doesn't cause a problem. But once we do that, we need to build exhaust for this thing. Right now we have our 2012 Civic Si catalytic converter on it. Uh, it has like this giant three inch outlet. So I bought a three inch ball joint this should fit on, on that. We're gonna neck this down then to our uh, two and a half inch exhaust pipe. I don't know if I'm gonna build the entire exhaust at this particular moment. Uh, I just need enough to fire it up. I don't really care if it's allowed for fire up. Then we can build it after that. But uh, I have an appointment tomorrow at Honda and uh, I wanna get this thing fired up. So we need to get going. We'll uh, turn the key on and see if we get our key code. Uh, actually install the battery. Then turn the key on, see if we get our key code. If we do, uh, we'll make a trip down to the Honda dealership to have the computer reflashed to have the VIN number from this car in the computer and have it accept the immobilizer code from our key. And with that, we should be able to fire it up. I forgot to mention we're using the stock radiator on this. Now, the radiator outlets on the, the fit are small. They're like inch and an eighth and our uh, outlets on the engine are an inch and a quarter. The way we get away with that is we use a shrink tube called XHF and it actually has a glue inside of it and it shrinks down three to one. So we cut off a piece, we slide it over, we use a heat gun to shrink it down and that uh, sizes it up so that we can put the hose on it with that and the glue keeps it from leaking. I found that without the glue, sometimes the, uh, when the, the shrink tube gets hot, it moves a little bit. Uh, but by using the XHF with glue, uh, we can size up our outlet. It gives us uh, 
really, really close to uh, the inch and a quarter. We just use a, a worm clamp in order to clamp it down tight rather than the spring clamp, and it works uh, just fine. I mentioned uh, Brian was working on the harness. Uh, this is Brian Thomas. He's actually the other wiring guru here at uh, Hasport. He's been doing this for, oh, a long time. Uh, we, <laughs> we have him working on our adapter. When I harvested the plug out of the salvage yard, I took a, the other side of the plug for the a cord harness and about six inches of extra wire He's crimped on the proper connectors on it, and now he's gonna pin them into our CRZ plug. Uh, the reason we know where they're supposed to go is yesterday he and I went through the wiring diagram and paired up everything. So we have right here our conversion. This is the fit C101 plug, and it talks about uh, all the wires and their positions. This is our uh, C101 plug. I haven't drawn a picture of it yet. C101 plug for the uh, Accord harness, and here are the wires that are going. So uh, we're taking all these wires and putting them into these positions over here on the C101 plug, and that should allow us <laughs> that should allow us to make our uh, all our connections properly. All right, some of you guys may notice that we actually have our axle touching the bottom of the strut right here. This has to do with the fact that the suspension is in full droop right now. Now, the solution, if let's say you're going to be running this car where the suspension might go into droop, uh, one of the things you might want to do is you might want to think about using an RSX or Civic style intermediate shaft. The reason that works is this, that intermediate shaft is shorter. The problem is though, all three bolts can't go in. There's a third bolt that actually would be interfering with our oil pump. So you wind up cutting that one off and just using two bolts to hold the intermediate shaft on. Now there's several guys that have been racing without any problem whatsoever on that. So it, it will work. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, some of the racers prefer that, particularly if they're going hard around corners, the car leans and the, this suspension extends and it might rub basically on the bottom of your strut. Uh, for street, you should be fine like this. Uh, but if you are going to be rallying the car or road racing the car and maybe uh, you might find that it, it's uh, going to be leaning over really far or some racers will lift their car up in the air and warm them up with the engines, the tires off the ground. Those types of things are going to cause a problem. This will rub. So uh, up to you. Uh, Passport makes axles for both lengths. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run it like this, see if it's a problem. And if it is a problem, we'll switch into rear shafts. If it's not a problem, we're going to leave it like this. Cool. I'm not sure why that pokes through so far, but I think that's kind of a waste. Well, I'm going to shorten this, put my transition on here, and then start snaking through to our exhaust. See the line? I'm getting there. Getting there. I don't know why they make it sit so far in. It actually interrupts how it works on the ball joint and actually destroys that aluminum bushing. So what I'm going to do now is actually do a transition from, from this smaller tube to this larger tube. I'm going to try first to go have it uh, expanded because uh, I think that'll actually work rather well. Uh, if that doesn't work, I actually have a small transition that I can weld on there. It's just not the same thickness of metal, so I'd rather have a thicker piece of metal. And so I'm gonna see if that can get stretched out. All right, now I just need to make the fit have that wire that doesn't have that wire since it was automatic, so. We'll figure that out later. It's just reverse lights. It doesn't <laughs> affect drivability. Dang it. So close. This intake manifold wasn't in the way. And, well, okay. So I guess overflow will have to be something not 
country. Well, nothing like reinventing the wheel. I tried to have it expanded out from two and a half to three inch. Didn't work, so I have this uh, transition here. And what I'm gonna do is tack it in place here, up on top like that. Then I'm gonna chop it down real short. And then I'm gonna put this down on top of it. And then that'll give me like a gap to fill in with weld. Um, I think that'll be um, a little bit better than simply using this really thin wall transition. Welding that to that and that to that. I think it's a little bit on the thin side to do that. I mean, I could cut two rings out of here and do some tricky stuff, but pain in the butt. I think I just found my transition. That'll be a lot less gap to fill, plus they're both pretty thick wall. All right, let's try this. Quick with a knife. Good guy to have in a fight. As long as the other guy doesn't have a gun. This should be a cold air intake for an Accord. I like to see that. Yeah with our math. So we should be able to probably have to shorten it because this was really meant for air box off the side, which we don't have. We can cut it however you want. I mean, basically, if you want, we can make like a, a short air with a math right here. So I bought it basically for this. So we could, I wonder if it's directional, if the math sensor is directional. method again good question yeah look how much I picked up and I only spilled that much <laughs> all right so normally I would use Honda synthetic but I was out I need to fill it now I didn't want to do it on the on the trailer tomorrow so what do you think about this project? What do you think is gonna gonna happen with it? Well, it'll be pretty cool. I want to match it up against uh, L15. Oh, against Hasty's car? Yeah. starts but doesn't run is because we haven't flashed our ECU yet so what happens is when you turn the key on it primes acts like it's gonna start but then the immobilizer sees you don't have the right key so it doesn't really run so fires up and then dies almost immediately because the pumps turned off but we're ready to go to the Honda dealership get it reflashed and then we should be able to drive this damn thing around although it'd be kind of loud All right, we're here at the dealership and we're ready to get uh, the final step in our swap. Uh, what's happened is when you change the computer, the dealership has to reflash it with a uh, code to basically accept the MICU's information that the immobilizer key is correct. 
and uh, once we do that, it should fire up normally. Uh, you may have noticed yesterday when we fired up, it did actually turn on briefly. What happens is when you put the key in and turn it on, it goes through all its checks, the fuel pump comes on and primes, but because it's the ECU is not been programmed to accept this particular MICU and immobilizer code, it doesn't continue to run, so it just fires up and dies immediately. But we're going to get that taken care of right now. The dealership doesn't want us to show you the exact process for doing this, but that's okay. Any Honda dealership should be able to do this, whether you're doing it in this generation fit or let's say the, uh, the CRZ, which uses a very similar setup, uh, the dealership should be able to help you out, no problem. Okay, uh, this is gonna, we're gonna try first fire up. Here we go. Nice, it's got this much exhaust. Okay. <laughs> fire right up. Sweet, all right, so uh, I'm not gonna do it here because it's loud. We'll take it back to the shop and take it for a quick a little rip. Yeehaw, looks like I have some stuff. Okay, took it for a little rip. Lots of promise. You parked it in the second. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of power. So uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna um, finish our exhaust. Uh, we got some water leaking out somewhere. I don't know if we cracked the radiator when we were dicking around earlier, but uh, maybe it's a loose hose. But uh, anyway, we're gonna bring up the air, finish up our exhaust, and uh, that'll actually allow us to be able to drive it around. Um, Got a few changes to do, get some AC on this thing too, make it back my daily driver. I'm so looking forward to driving a stick shift again instead of an automatic. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up on this episode of VTech Academy. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, they have, we got lots more videos coming on this car. Uh, I've got plans for this puppy. If you like Fits or you got a friend that likes Fit, please think about liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friend. Anyway guys, thanks very much for joining us on another episode of VTech Academy. And we'll talk to you later.